My fellow Trinbegonians, 14 years after our independence, we took yet another bold step towards determining our own future. We were a young nation, unafraid to push ahead and reach for even greater. Bravely, we carved out something new from the remnants of the old, while further tightening our grasp on the rudder of this nation. Of course, the journey has not been easy, but we have made it thus far. We have made it to this point where we can proudly celebrate together our 44th anniversary as a republic. It is an honor not every country attains, as not every state has the privilege to exercise this high level of stewardship over its affairs. This is an achievement which should continue to gratify all of us as citizens of this beloved nation. So, Although we are unable to celebrate Republic Day in the manner that we have grown accustomed, we must still make every effort to keep the national morale high. For some, republicanism is a concept that needs to be reinforced, one that some may encounter a bit of difficulty in distinguishing. I believe the former president, Mr. Anthony Carmona, said it best. Independence Day celebrates the birth of our nation, but Republic Day celebrates our adulthood, our coming of age. And therefore, days such as today must be leveraged as an opportunity for us to edify one another. Let us view it as part of our civic duty to empower everyone who calls Trinidad and Tobago home. More importantly, let us endeavor to do so in a manner that is not condescending but in such a way that really ignites a genuine sense of curiosity within. Usually, our conversations surrounding our status as a republic tend to focus mainly on the changing of the guard, the replacement of the queen as the head of state by our own native president. Indeed, this transition was of great significance for us as a people. It meant that for the very first time in over 400 years, both executive and legislative powers resided completely with us, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Another aspect that considerable attention ought to be paid is our constitution, which remains the soul of it all. It was on this day 44 years ago that the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago convened under the Republican Constitution, a product of our own hands and minds, drafted by many of the prime movers and visionaries of this country. If the word republic suggests things of the people, then the Constitution can be seen as that tool which aims to protect the people's interests and will. It is that instrument that seeks to safeguard the liberty, justice, and security of all citizens, the supreme law of the land. Since those early days of this country's history to now, we have endured our fair share of highs and lows. Many of us remember the good moments, but recall the bad times much easier. And of course, some citizens have even eagerly conferred the title of Banana Republic on the land of our birth. I believe that this is a fear that can be transformed into an impetus which ensures this label never becomes our reality. I urge all of us as Trinbagonians to be mindful of the type of language that we use when we speak about our country, for tremendous power lies in the tongue. Call forth greatness and prosperity for our nation. Call forth peace in the areas of unrest. Call forth resilience so that we can surmount the challenges of today and tomorrow. I want to suggest to us that building this nation is nothing short of a sacred duty which will require all parts of our being. It is a task that will go beyond the quality of our words. It will also require us to truly examine our actions and in some cases the lack thereof. As I cautioned previously during my recent Independence Day address, 
the time has expired for a passive attitude towards nation building. We are still actively navigating a myriad of challenges stemming from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. This crisis is also compounded by the crime scourge that continues to plague much of our nation. Racism is also rearing its ugly head with more brazenness, revealing the presence of some deep-seated divisions amongst us. And of course, the threat of climate change continues to loom. There are no easy fixes for any of these issues. Also, there is little time for us to spare where finding solutions are concerned. I know it is easy to feel burdened at times by the work that lies ahead, but we must continue to remain determined and focused. These times demand an unflinching resolve from all of us. We cannot afford to doubt ourselves or the limitless value of the human potential. Together, our hands still hold the reins to our destiny and our hands will be vital for the plough. Even now, we can start in whatever small way in shaping the tomorrow that we so desire for our nation. It may be as simple as providing a quiet study space for a student or allowing them to freely access your internet connection. If you are financially able, you might even consider purchasing a digital device. In so doing, you are contributing not just to that child's education, but also to this country's future. Sometimes making a difference begins incrementally. It is not always a grand and quick answer, like so many of us are led to believe. To fight this pandemic, we were encouraged to physically distance, consistently wear our face mask, and regularly wash our hands. Simple tasks that we are all capable of doing, but are also powerful enough to flatten the curve. A fitting reminder that the consistent execution of seemingly insignificant actions can chip away at larger issues over time. My brothers and sisters, in this our 44th year, the challenges that we face are unprecedented. But being the strong and powerful people that we are, we will do what is required of us during this difficult period. We will love each other consistently. We will demonstrate patriotism. We will demonstrate tenacity. And we will keep our eyes fixed skyward. God bless you. And may God bless the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Happy Republic Day to all of you.